shout out to Nash, man. I almost did not want to hit the music tonight. Because after the Knicks shoot out to a 21 point lead, a 16 point fourth quarter lead, they did their best, I mean, absolute best, to blow this whole thing, end up losing the lead, take a one point deficit going into crunch time. Carl Anthony Towns was amazing for the Timberwolves. Give credit where it's due. But Julius got his and one, RJ got his and one. And when they needed it the most, they got clutch free throws from Alec Burks to put this thing away. <laughs> 103 to 99, man. Yeah, I needed my pacemaker, man. I needed my pacemaker tonight. But the Knicks win it 103 99. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Hit that thumbs up button for your squad. Number one show for the fans by the fans. CP Ashley Moss, the Tratacaster, Alex Rotaros in the building. Al, give me some thoughts on this one, man, because it was an unbelievable finish, man. Give me some thoughts, bro. Oh my God! Talk about I, it's not like a tale of two halves. It's more like three quarters. They showed tale up. Tale of two quarters. Quarter. It, was, it was just like what? It, so frustrating that they had a uh, twenty point, lead, twenty one point lead. Uh, as Ashley pointed me, uh, corrected me before this. We hopped on, <laughs> but uh, you know, we thought it was going to be an easy cakewalk game. It was like Minnesota. They haven't been closing games. Like they keep it close for the most part, but they just can't seem to find a way to do it. And the Knicks just. I feel like it just comes to playing down to competition, like for them, like they were just on, like I, I had that feeling throughout the entire night that they were just kind of on cruise control yeah. as they were playing and they just were able to get up to 21 points. And then they were still staying on cruise control going all the way into the fourth quarter. Although it didn't help that the second unit just beside Alec Burks, no one could get it going tonight. You saw D Rose struggling to find a shot yeah. quickly. Couldn't really get it going. Although he was able to draw like a foul and get to the line. Just no one was able to get it in the second unit, so we had to really rely on our first unit. But if we tough. lost this game, man, I would have probably been in a hospital right tough, now. Tough, tough, tough. Ash, what happened, man? What happened? You jinxed us. <laughs> you jinxed us is what happened. No, it was, listen, just like we always talk about good losses and bad losses, there are such things as good wins and bad wins. And, yes, you got the dub in the column, and that's really, you know, at the end of the day, you are what your record says you are. And we got a win to add to our record, but this was an ugly one. I mean, ugly. the Timberwolves came in at seven and twenty-three, the worst in the NBA. We had a twenty-one point lead on them that ultimately could have went in either direction. I think the rotations killed us. Rose did not look great. Yeah. I mean, the foul trouble was atrocious between Randall and Noel, who you know eventually fouled out. The game had no flow. I mean, the Knicks' second unit is somewhat solid. I would say. I think they has their moments where it's a solid second unit the Timberwolves do not and we just let you know cat get cooking and it just was it was a ridiculous ridiculous predicament to be in we should never have been in it we pulled out the win yeah. but this was a telling one and it's a lot of things that you know going into the film room looking at you know the games that are going to be in the garden this upcoming week there's some things that that um that needs to be fixed and needs to be yeah. corrected. You're not supposed to get a, you're not supposed to get into a close, you know, shootout and you're not supposed to have a close game against a team like this. Wor at all. Worst team in the league. And I honestly think Cat could have went for 50 if he, if he applied himself a little bit more because Noel, neither Noel nor Taj had, had answers for him. Taj, you know, give credit Taj, you know, bodied him up a little bit at that last possession, but it rimmed out. It rimmed in and out. You know, Cat could have easily made that shot. It just got lucky it bounced out once Noel uh, fouled out and Taj was guarding him. But um, the, the concerns I had was, number one, three-point defense. You know, this was a team that doesn't shoot the three particularly well. They gave, the Knicks gave Minnesota 16 threes on the night, shot over 40% from three. Conversely, the Knicks only made six threes tonight. The offense was stuck in the mud once again. Couldn't finish. Thought this whole game was started off and it even ended with the, the Knicks not able to put the ball in the hole uh, within three feet of the hoop. With whether it was whether it was Peyton, Derrick Rose, even RJ at times, we just could not get the ball into the hole at the rim, and and that was an yeah. issue. Another issue I looked at was the bench. You know, the second unit, which which had been a strength, and when D Rose came in, him and quickly had it cooking for about three games, but they've come back to life a little bit. Struggled. Obi struggled to the point where in that pivotal point in the third quarter when they started to blow the lead, Tib pulls him with the quick hook. You know what I mean? So that that second unit definitely didn't have it tonight, man. Uh, Ash, what would you think about him tonight? 
Yeah, the second unit, like I mentioned, it didn't look great, and it is a solid second unit. Obviously, scoring is one of our issues on this team. Nobody is oblivious to that fact, but the second unit, you know, for the past few games has been decent. It has been keeping us, you know, in close games and also ultimately, you know, responsible for helping us to secure some wins along the way, too. So I don't know really what went on today. They looked a little tired. They looked a little lethargic. They also looked like they kind of just, I don't know if it was the long break. I'm not really sure what was going on going on but it just didn't look like the same you know dynamic or rather the same you know just um explosive second unit that we usually see that kind of gets the offense moving I thought you know um Tibbs kind of kept them also in a little bit too long I would like to see them you know get off the court a little bit quicker especially because they just were not clicking but you know like I said a win is a win but this is a telling win and you know there are some things that need to go ahead and be corrected especially you know playing the next few games at home you need to defend home court at all costs necessary so I just hope that in that film room they're looking at the things that although they got the win they're looking at the things that could have been done better because there's a lot of them the list yeah. is pretty long De- definitely man and Papa left Papa left what's going on bro I hope everything's doing well with you guys CP Ash Alex the, the feeling of that loss would have been so bad it would have set up your day at work in a terrible way it would it would have killed Tuesday's <laughs> game because we're we're probably behind the eight ball there, and then it would just put the worst feeling on this home stretch. So I'm absolutely relieved, and I'm definitely happy that we won the game. With that said, um, you know there's a few things we need to clean up um, on defense in the in the uh, the second unit. We really struggled in the paint yeah. to rebound, um, especially when Noel uh, came out. And uh, Minnesota closed the lead to three. And uh, I really thought we had a uh, good answer for that at the end of the half and then in the third quarter. But what my thing, what I think is happening is you look at a team like Toronto Raptors, Nick Nurse, or old school Spurs with Popovich, whenever they get in a rut like that, they just run a system. And that's, you know, the strength of our team is that we can just give Randall the ball and he yeah, runs the team, like you said, like an engine. But when we start missing shots and we start losing those, you know, simple looks at the rim, it kind of takes the edge off the game, especially when you're up, you know, 15, 14 points. So, I don't know. It was just a very, you know, when Hernan Gomez hit that four-point play, yeah, it's it was kind of, you know, something flashed off in, in all of our minds, I think, like, yeah, all right. This could this could potentially go bad. <laughs> yeah. But um yeah. it actually <laughs> and here it before. actually would. But um but uh you know I, you know Tibbs gets a lot of uh heat for uh, what he did. I can't I I don't know if someone's gonna complain about IQ, it's not gonna be me tonight. But I just wanna give uh uh Tibbs some credit for a for a substitution he made. Not the Derek Rose one for Peyton, but actually taking out Derek Rose when we were up yeah, one he did. He uh, did. for Alec Burks. And the reason why he did that is because no matter what, if Town scores there, we're calling timeout. And if he misses, we have a free throw shooter on right. the floor. Yeah. It's and good it turned out to be that Alec Burks got the, you know, very uh, NBA 2K-ish, you know, you're not that good at shooting free throws in a video game, but his free throw rating is very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's good. <laughs> Free throws at the end of the game. So, um, you know, I want to give uh, credit to Tibbs there. And uh, I want to, you know, give credit at the end of this call for Julius Randle for proving me wrong um, and just capping off his all-star campaign in a very, very solid fashion. Um, It seems like his IQ of what he wants to do with the ball he doesn't settle for anything. He gets the perfect shot he wants, and it's just a pleasure to watch. And last thing I'll say about RJ, um, a lot of people are kind of like iffy on RJ. I'm not one of them. I love RJ. And the fact that he's, you know, missing these shots at the rim, you 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 can't get mad at him because who else do you want to shoot the yeah. ball? There's nobody else on this team who's who's ready and willing to shoot that ball other than him and Randall. Yeah. There was a, a space jam moment when Derek Rose ran through the lane and jumped back past to Randall and he jumped back past to Reggie Bullock. That was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. <laughs> um but uh you know <laughs> RJ definitely doesn't care. RJ had one of the worst bunny 
choke job misses, yeah. and then he came back with a t- with man one, and he took on three pinballs. Tough. And the fact is, we don't have space. It's the spacing, man. The that spacing. That is going to create, you know, the, the those kickoff positions. So yeah, man. I love RJ. I'm not mad at the win. We're 15 and 16, and we can actually have a great moment with the fans. On Appreciate it. Have a great night, guys. Pre- appreciate it, bro. Hope you're recovering well. And like Ash, it's like, it's like you were saying the other night, man. We we need spacing around RJ, man. Yeah. Every time he's driving to the hope, it's he's he's on four guys in the paint. I yeah. mean, we we've got to we got to we got to figure out those lineups, stagger those lineups so that he's out there with you know Burks, Randall, mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. quickly. You know what I mean? Get him a Bullock. Get him out there with the shooters, man. We got to yeah. give this kid some space. But yeah, definitely. Like I, I've said before, and I'll keep saying it, RJ does best when he has a nice when he has nice spacing. I mean, you've seen in earlier games when IQ was kind of able to get that offense running for him. RJ just flourishes in environments like that. So Tibbs really needs to do, obviously it's a little bit hard now because we don't have the shooters that we need to go ahead and create that offense for him. But I think, you know, Tibbs needs to do the best job he can possible with what he has. Has until he has something else because you know that's where you know RJ really flourishes where he shines but I think the great thing about RJ is he's doing a lot with not having what he needs to really get to the next level I True think story. it's really impressive that he's kind of able to just add different things to his game that really we're not making it easy for him to add and he's still kind of getting you know in the paint and he's still getting those shots up and he's still kind of helping still efficient. out He's still efficient, you know, on multiple ends, multiple sides of that ball. So I just think that, you know, when you really get RJ the help that he needs and when he really is an offense and part of a team that has all the little things that somebody of RJ's position needs to really take his game to the next level, it's going to be incredible. It's going to be fantastic. He is going to, like I say, and I keep saying it, he is the face of this franchise and we've only just begun to see what he's going to look like. So, yeah. Al, Al, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, as you said, we need shooters on this team. Like, you're not going to see RJ at his full strength unless you get a lot of floor spacing on, like, this team for him. So, <clears throat> you see Tibbs is, like, starting to, like, like start to, like, a, what is it, um, like, stagger some of these minutes. Like, you'll see Randall now coming in with, like, the second unit before Obi comes in. You'll see Rose, IQ, Burks, and uh, Taj on the floor. So, He's trying to get Randall some spacing. Now we want to see that for RJ and see what RJ can do with those guys too. Because yeah. I think if you give those guys to RJ, like RJ could just run wild, especially in transition, you know, with those type, with those guys as well. I'd love to see that. That's something that would definitely like help this team too. Like get some quick, e- quick, easy transition buckets mm-hmm. that the second unit can, can do. We haven't e- seen enough of it, but yeah, just, we need shooting. We need to put RJ in just like, like open space, let him rock. You saw what happened when Payton was able to find him for that. It was look he made it look easy. He but hit it him with the got the yeah. He hit him with yeah. the yeah. got the wild. Payton yeah. passed it to him. Dude, my my heart was in my throat. And I was like, did this actually just happen? Payton passed it to him for the My life. <laughs> incredible. Absolutely incredible. So uh yeah, as as you guys said, man, RJ's doing a lot with a little right now. And uh very, he was very critical in this game. Very critical in this game. So so to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your squad. Um, what do you guys want to do by the trade deadline? You know, we're coming up almost a month away on the trade deadline. Should we be buyers? Should we be sellers? Call us up. Let us know. Ari in the building. Ari, what's going on, bro? Hey, what's up going on? CP? What's going on, it's Ashley? Good, um, perfect, perfect question. The only answer to that question is sellers, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> All right, like, yeah, we know what you want to do. Here's the thing. This is, and, and I wanted to... I wanted to talk about this before you even brought it up, mm-hmm. but uh, I wanted to talk about um, that interview you did, that awesome interview. If you Appreciate haven't it. Check, seen it, check it out with the T-Wolves guy. Awesome interview, awesome insight. Basically, what what you know I got from that was that kids is trying to win now. We knew that, but now we really know that, right? And um, listen, man, I need Leon Rose to be disciplined and um, you know and, and, and stick with this rebuild, man. We need to be sellers at the deadline, all right? And development needs to be the number one priority. If we trade the farm for Bradley Beal, Bradley Beal and Julius Randle aren't going to win us anything and we're going to lose our entire future, I will not have it, all right? We, we're not ready for that type of move yet. We need more assets. We need to develop these players. And then next year or the year after, yeah. after we get another lottery pick or we get two picks, we get, the, we get a – we make the playoffs, let's say. We got our pick and, and Dallas's pick. 
Then maybe next year, when you have more assets and you, you have another year of development, then you then you chase. Yeah. But right now, the answer is obviously being sellers, right? Obviously. Mm -hmm. And one other thing I wanted to talk about real quick, also, um, the Julius Randle situation, right? I, oh boy. Listen, okay. Oh boy. Again, <laughs> rebuilding <laughs> is the number one priority right now because there's no point of making a win now move if you're not going to win a championship i follow this girl on instagram all right mm -hmm. and she says in her caption if you're not first you're last okay oh, boy that was she me that in the caption, right? <laughs> yeah, i know that's the point <laughs> to say, all right we need to we need to put ourselves in a position to get the next lebron james or Get the next superstar, right? And you don't do that by just mortgaging. Like, why wouldn't we have just signed Jimmy Butler and and Vucevic in 2019 if we wanted to get the two the two the two all stars? We didn't want to do that then because we knew it wasn't enough. It's too early to do it. We need to keep developing, early. right? But I'm with you, bro. I'm with you 100. percent Um, listen, Bradley Beal, Ash. We we know the talent that he is, man. We know yeah. the talent. He's an absolute stud. I would love to have him on this team. We're just not ready. We're not ready for Bradley Beal. We're not at the point in our in our rebuild, in our trajectory, where Bradley Beal is a trade for Bradley Beal is going to make much sense for us right now. It's just not going yeah. to make much sense for us at this current moment in time. It's, it's not even about whether the Wings want to trade him. It's does Bradley Beal want to go? Yeah. He's has the power it's kind of like you know he's torturing himself but that's a different conversation right hopefully. yeah yeah it's too early i'm with i'm with ari on that man it's too early it's too early to to talk to talk you know mortgage in the future for bradley beal i'm definitely not trying to do that no chance no chance no i agree i actually agree with that take um you know i said a couple of shows ago before we went on this little mini break i said any move that you make you know in this era in this portion of our rebuilding era can you know either make or break us for seasons to come and I don't think trading the house for someone like Bradley Beal obviously an exceptional talent shout out to him for getting his first all-star starter vote mm -hmm. I mean amazing amazing player um it's just we're Rolling. not there we're on a team that needs to win immediately it's not a move that we need to make because it's not going to be something that I feel like is going to drastically help us change as a team I just think that if anything, it can go ahead and hurt us in the long run. And I think we are in a position right now where there are multiple pieces that we have that are already existing within our team, within our franchise that we want to keep. And I think it's about building on top of what we already have.